we haven't told the story in a while, and he says, continuing it up, Yale's bringing here, she, whatever it is, and he's talking about this is not such so long ago, but Chsidim, who the, the Emes of Chsidis completely, in his words, grasped their whole Mitzvahs. So he says the following, the dogma relates to Rabbi El. I, I once heard from Ramayshke Gerari, he's the Zayd of the Gerari, in South Africa and in the... Naska's father. No one here knows Naska, except for the Matra. He lives here in Montreal. Also, big masculine. Anyway, he was, so, he was your else, Chabrosa. Yeah, they came together to America. So, this is the father. Ramesh, there's pictures of him. Ramesh Gagarari. So, he himself, Rabiel says he was a yid with a tremendous deep on the kid was a big masculine. So, he, this Ramesh tells a story with his brother, Rabirish. What's the story? So they had a relative whose name was, the first time I'm hearing about him, Shmuel Charuler. He plays from, came from Charul, whatever that they pronounce it. I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly. And this is Shmuel, who their relative was a big gone in Nigla and a big Maimi uh, Godel, a deep thinker in Chesidus and Oived Hashem. And he was also part of this secret VAD, this secret VAD committee, whose job it was concerned with the welfare of Russian Jewry. And the Rebbe Rashab greatly uh, uh, valued this Rabbi Shemu. You hear? Rabbi El says, Bachlal, you could say on this Rabbi Shemu that he was an Adam Shalom. He was like the relatively perfect man with unique and many milers. It would happen that this Abshmo would come to Lubavitch and speak about a concept in Chesidus with his friend and come back a year later and you continue talking to him on that subject exactly where they left as if they just were discussing it moments ago, a year later. To tell you that this head, who is the cop Gilek? Where was his head? So he tells a story, Rabbi El, he heard that he heard from Rabbi Moshka, who was his cousin. So once he said, Shmuel came to Kremenchuk, and he came into the Pusha Gerari's business. I think they made cigarettes, if I'm not mistaken. Tobacco. So he, he visiting him. So uh, Hirschel, this is, yeah, says to his cousin, uh, He's in the middle of business, in the middle of work. So in honor of him, he says to him, uh, okay, I'm going to finish. Well, give me a few minutes. He's in the middle of the work day. But his cousin, his husband, the cousin, came. He says to him, give me a couple of minutes and we're going to go home. Leave the work middle of the day. So he quickly wrapped up what he had to do in the office, here show. And he, he looks to see, you know, so where's his cousin? He says, Shmuel, I'm going to go to the home. If Shmuel's not there, the place we just left him, you know, moments earlier. So, so he was thinking, I mean, maybe I did the wrong thing. And I should have stopped what I'm doing right away and not told him, wait a few minutes. And Mustafa, he didn't wait and just went to my house directly, not waiting for me. So he runs home. Hirsha runs home to be shocked. Shmuel's not there. Shmuel's not there. Maybe he's in Shul, Master Shul, not in Shul. In the end, after a long time of searching, he decides to go back to the factory to find him. So maybe he's there. Yeah, and, all, and he finds him Shmuel in a, in a corner, somewhere in the corner of the factory. And he's, he's describing him. He's leaning on his fist like this uh, on the wall. Eyes closed tight. And he's kneeling like this against the wall, completely immersed in his thought. So Hirsha stands and says to him, Reb Shmuel, no answer. He had no choice, but he gives him a little tap on the shoulder. Then Reb Shmuel wakes up, looks at him, and says, Ah, you're ready? You're finished? Lom, lom again. 
He thought it was only a few, this was like an hour or two looking for him. He thought that only a few seconds had elapsed. Because the story concludes that when they came home, Sir Shmuel went to Dav Mairiv, put in the gartel, and as he's putting his, his two fingers in the gartel and starts to say, Vuhurachim, he burst into tears. And Abiyo says perhaps that his, his bursting to tears here was behemshech to what he was being thinking about, then lost in thought in the corner of the factory. Okay, these stories, friends, there's a purpose for them. What's the purpose of these stories? Glee. Huh? Glee. To know, to know that what, uh, what uh, first at least to know. It lifts us a little bit. Huh? This Huh? This is not a like yeah, and it takes a little bit the edge of our excitement of uh, other things. A little bit, huh? A little bit.